That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Opportunities that were available. Uh, we also had multiple lefty that we were able to award. 48 across the United States, including uh, for underserved students, we took 38 high school students. And now I have the opportunity of presenting the first award of responsible for the safe return of the astronauts. Please welcome. So could you give us a, a bit of background about why why you chose this vehicle to go to the moon? President Kennedy saw the great place and Yuri Yaren got on his one orbit around the Earth. Astronauts Neil A. Armstrong, Edwin E. Aldrin, and Michael Collins, the three men who will make the next and most historic round trip to the moon. Command pilot for this first landing, astronaut Neil Armstrong. It will be Armstrong who steps cautiously out onto the moon for the first time. I think there's nothing more important actually than um, honoring Apollo. The, for me, it is the most difficult thing we've done as a civilization. And that means, for me, that it's the most important thing we've done as a civilization. I mean, what history tells us is if we don't overreach, if we don't try to do things that we can't do or we're not capable of doing at the time, then steady state is not an option. Your civilization collapses. George, we feel positive that if we go as possible at the time, in 1961, we're going to go... Zero. Liftoff. All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. Yes, sir, reading you loud and clear. On the periscope, what a beautiful view. About cover over. We have to realize that this is a historic moment in the evolution of humanity, in the evolution of life on this planet. Uh, Human beings and the machines that we have created are enabling us, have enabled us, to move out from the womb of Earth, out from Mother Earth into the larger cosmos. That is an amazing thing when you think about all the life we know being on this little planet Earth, and we now are beginning to move out. I told the Congress and the American public this what we you specifically ask about the Saturn V rocket? Well, the We're certainly at the beginning of this great adventure in the sense that there's infinity in front of us and we've opened the door and we've gone through it. So, I mean, uh, this adventure is going to go on for a long, long time, uh, you, you know, leaving the Earth and moving out into the larger cosmos is what Apollo did. And uh, that's not going to stop. Uh, we lost another... Uh, time. Because it's hard, etc., etc., and the Soviet Union. This is the day the United States surpasses the Soviet Union in space for the first time. The mighty Saturn, 16 stories high, is the heaviest spacecraft ever to be poised on a launching pad. The weight of rocket and payload is 562 tons, and the spacecraft itself will mean 20,000 pounds in orbit, 6,000 pounds heavier than the biggest Soviet payload. We started out truly in a race with Russia and uh, to, one to get into space, but more importantly, the one where we set the race to land a man on the moon. And because of the focus on that, we were able to basically perfect the space program to the level at which it could uh, operate at that time. engines push the Saturn skyward with a thrust of a million and a half pounds. And riding with it to a new high is the prestige of Uncle Sam in the race for the moon. Almost six years to the day after the nation's first feeble probe into space, U.S. scientists launch a space vehicle 670 times as heavy. By television and telephone, the president keeps in constant touch with the blockhouse at Cape Kennedy, and he was the first to extend the nation's congratulations. We're looking at the 50th anniversary of the Apollo missions, at least the, the ones that got us from our first one, liftoff, that was Apollo 7 that I flew, uh, to Apollo 11 for the first landing on the moon. 
and I find it a little surprising, but mostly just so encouraging to see the population at, at large excited about that happening. Nobody seems to realize that that was the third orbital ball on the front. They put that on top of a proton. We don't have all the engineering talent we had then. We have computers that can do fantastic things now. And you got more power in your cell phone than we had on Germany. Apollo Falcon, really as much power as we had in Mission Control. <coughs> but we had people had experience that knew how to think, take responsibility. Hurry, seconds, and we're on the way. Thank you, Tommy, looking real fine. Coming up on one minute, we're clear of the beach. Roger. Falling out three miles in altitude, one mile downrange. I think they should know how hard we worked. You know, everybody. There's 400,000 people working on Project Apollo. And uh, believe me, a 40-hour work week was a vacation in those days. Like I said, we flew 10 missions in 20 months on Gemini. And then once we started Apollo, uh, we flew in nine months, five missions, and four of them on the big Saturn. That was tough, but we did it. Themselves in 2010, NASA authorization put back the heavy booster. And... Columbia, this is Houston, over.